my seven steps are based around, let me tell you what they are, product, people, passion, um, being prepared, pipelines, uh, promotion, post success, which is when you've got to the exit. I arrived in the UK with my parents back in the early 1960s as I was about six years old. Um, my, I think of my parents as true entrepreneurs because I think people that have moved from another country not knowing anything about the country, just about being able to understand the, the, the language, well not they, they did understand the language but with a huge uh, Guyanese accent. Um, it, for, for them it was it was foreign so um, I think they show a lot of resilience and I think that's one of the traits that entrepreneurs really need so in 1961 I think it was they packed up their bags and six kids and came to the UK um, they as far as they were concerned they were invited by Queen and Country to come and help rebuild the motherland so they thought, well, if the Queen's invited us, everybody's going to welcome us with open arms. Of course, arriving here, they found that wasn't true at all. <laughs> In fact, uh, one of the first things they had to do was to find somewhere for six pe uh, sorry, eight people to live. And um, again, they showed a bit of resilience by um, finding somewhere, even though at that time, it was still legal for people to have, for landlords to have notices on their doors and their windows that said no collars, no dogs. Oh, and sometimes even no children but they found a two-roomed um, basement flat under the smog and smoke of Battersea Power Station which was still alive at the time and we lived there for eight years but for me it was eight glorious years um, I, I still remember it well and uh, during those eight years JFK became president and was shot, uh, and then was shot. Martin Luther King uh, led um, a million men to, wa um, to Washington and to the White House and was shot. And then later on during those eight years, man landed on the moon, which to me meant women could do anything. So, um, and you're thinking, well, what's that got to do with your background, you know? So for me, um, the fact that um, JFK was one of the, the modern day presidents, if you like, or one of the first modern day presidents to outwardly promote equality. And Martin Luther King again marched to Washington because he wanted to promote um, race equality. Uh, and I think that kind of stuck in my mind because throughout, certainly throughout my working life, I've been a campaigner and an advocate and passionate about equality and diversity and that led me to um, was one of the things that led me to write my book so the equality women's equality and one of the things that led me to become involved with the found as a founding director of choice fm was about um, again it was about equality because we all we had the only music we could listen to was I think was Greg Edwards who Rob, Rob might remember it back there. So Greg Edwards used to have the only black music show on Capital Radio at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night and that was once a week. That's the only black music we can listen to unless we were going to be listening to pirate radio stations. Legally I should say, legal. Um, so Choice FM, the opportunity of the widening of the um, airwaves came along and Choice FM uh, or the, the, the directors got together and invited me to be part of the founding, um, uh, a founding director. So, um, and, and to a certain extent, this is where your seven steps begin. Because one of the things you have to do to be an entrepreneur, if you expect a seven figure exit, is to have an idea that's going to get you there. So, um, there were no other black radio stations legal, um, so Choice FM was in a perfect position. Choice FM for me was, was the product that was going to allow me to have the seven figures. And um, in order to get, be part of the Choice FM um, 
team, I had to find money to put into um, to put into the pot, basically my share of the uh, development funds. And at that time, I had absolutely no money, but I. I was going to say I begged, stole and borrowed, but I didn't steal, I begged and borrowed. Um, and at that time, when Choice FM was about to um, begin, it was still an era when it was difficult for women to get bank loans and access to funding was still really limited to women. So um, I persuaded my parents at the time to um, remortgage their house. And it was a huge risk, but I was prepared to take that risk. Um, I was warned about all sorts of things uh, like, um, are you sure that's the right thing to do? Um, uh, it's a pirate station, you'll never get the license. Um, what about your, I had a young daughter at the time, what about your daughter's education? You're putting money into radio. You know, what money is music, is, what money is music gonna make you? How are you gonna live? And then um, from some people, I even got the suggestion, anyway, black music will never catch on. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> so, um, but one of the things you have to be is be very focused and determined um, once you've got your idea. And I could have been easily dissuaded by all the, what I call white noise around me. People telling me, don't do this, don't do that, don't invest, it will never happen. But I kept, my, I kept my focus. The next thing you have to think about is people. Who are you going to be working with? Who are the people that are going to support you? Um, whatever you do in your business, if it's going to be a successful business, you need to be a leader in that field, a leader in that industry. Um, and to be a... Um, to, have, uh, to be a leader, you need to have a network. Uh, a network of people basically that's going to be following you so you n really need to make sure that you've got your what I call your cheerleaders and that there's going to be people that will stand <coughs> behind you and be with you no matter what tough time you go through whether it's an up or a down but when you're up you have to remember the people that have been there with you so I see lots of heads nodding in the background there so um, it's not only about being a leader, it's about cult cultivating the types of followers, followers you have as well. And then we talk about passion. Passion will, passion will get you up in the morning and passion will keep you up at night. And if you've got no passion for the things that's going to give you that seven figure exit, you're gonna have a really tough time getting there, especially if you're doing it from the point of view of an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, it's going to be a lonely journey, it's going to be a hard journey, and you have to have the passion, because there will be many, many, many times, unless you've got an absolutely rich backer that's going to invest and make sure that you all your needs are taken care of, which I didn't have either in my PR business or when I was doing Choice FM. Um, not so much Choice FM, but my own business, there were so many times when there was no money coming in, the accounts weren't, you know, I weren't, uh, the clients weren't there. Um, but you have to have the passion to keep going. You have also have to have the belief in yourself. And without the passion, you probably won't have the belief in yourself. If you've got no belief in yourself, you'll give up and you don't want to do that. So passion is my third P. Then you have to be prepared. And when I say prepared, I mean um, physically, mentally, educationally. Um, and when I talk about um, physically, as, sorry, emotionally as well. In other words, you've got to have the resilience to keep going, to make sure that you're forever building your, 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 build, um, sorry, your business. So um, what I call, you have to develop some bounce back ability the ability to bounce back because there's going to be a lot of times when you fall over and if you can't get up again and as a lot of people say it's not the 99 times you fall over it's the hundredth time you get up so be prepared but you also have to be prepared for something else you have to be prepared 
to realize that if your business really isn't working and there's so many things wrong with it, you have to know when to walk away. And that's a really hard thing to do because some people don't know when to walk away and they just keep trying, keep trying. And that's the end of you. And that, and that you know, that, that idea can be ruined uh, and not work because you just don't know, or you can be ruined because you just don't know when to walk away from something that is just never gonna work. It's a hard thing to think about, but um, you need to. So you need to think about your pipeline as well. Um, and when I say your pipeline, I'm, I'm talking about <clears throat> people that have helped you along the way and people you have helped along the way. And even to the point of when your business is successful, who are you gonna leave it to? Who's going to take it the next step? So you need to think about, <clears throat> I, I'm talking about a business that is now quite well developed. You need to make sure you've got people that you've trained to take that business to the next step and build your pipeline to keep your business, your legacy, if you like, um, going in the right direction. Um, and then we talk about promote. There's a saying that a business without promotion, you have to listen to this quite carefully, a business without promotion is like a young boy winking at a young girl in the dark. He knows he's doing it, but nobody else does. Do you get that? Yeah? So you have to make sure that if you're running a business, that people know that your business is there. So, um, and that was one of the reasons that I was passionate about getting Choice FM on air, because one of the things that we did, we made advertising accessible to, to um, small and local businesses, which was mostly black businesses. Because if we were talking about advertising on one of the mainstream radios, it was something ridiculous like, I don't know, 300 pounds a minute or 3,000 pounds, it was ridiculous. Um, but the, the advent of local radio stations meant it was more, um, it was more easily accessible. So I'm going straight to, um, I'm going to go on to post success. Now this, um, there's always going to be a post success. You're not going to be successful forever. So this is something you have to think about. What do I do? Like for me, I had to think about what am I going to do after Choice FM has been sold? Because it's, it's an amazing feeling having a successful business. You become, you think you're invincible. You think it's never going to end. You think that everybody loves you and everybody's your friend until you either, either the business closes or you sell it or it, whatever, it's no longer there. And then you find out who your real friends are. So you have to think ahead about what are you going to do? What's the next wave you're going to ride? For me, I've always found it, I've found that I've always kind of reinvented myself in one way or another um, every seven years. And you can see there's a kind of a pattern of sevens going on in my life. But I always feel that, um, you know, I started my PR company. First of all, it was music PR because there was no one, no, at that time, 30 years ago, there was nobody um, promoting black artists. It was all about the white artists. So there was a niche there for me. Um, then, it seemed like seven years later, uh, the Choice FM thing came along. Then about seven years later, all of a sudden, it was very hip. It was, um, what was it, what was the saying? Um, black is the new white, was it? Or whatever that was, whatever that saying was. So all of a sudden, all the big PR companies that wouldn't touch anything black was all jumping in on the whole, the, the whole equality and diversity thing. They, it was, suddenly it was hip to be promoting something black. So I had again to reinvent myself and think, because I couldn't compete with the big, with the big companies, I had to reinvent myself and think about what I'm going to do next. Um, uh, after Choice FM, uh, I, st I did a bit of um, uh, sorry theatre and film and and so on and so forth. Who've heard of Spike Lee? Yeah. So I was the first person to do his PR in the UK. I just happened to be in the US when he launched She's Gotta Have It and then um, brought him over here. So I had a relationship, an ongoing relationship with him. So I spent a lot of time doing film 
Um, but uh, soon after that, it was all government type things. So I'm, I've moved from music, which was my background, right through to government departments and government campaigns and all sorts of things. So right now, um, I'm now in my second year of my next seven year itch, if you like. And that is um, the book that I've written, Seven Traits of Highly Successful Women on Boards. I don't know where you got leaders from, but anyway. <laughs> Seven Traits of Highly Successful Women on Boards, which has taken me places I never thought I'd go. I've met people I never thought I'd meet. I'm doing things I never thought I'd do. Two weeks ago, I was in the UN um, uh, in New York speaking at United Nations for International Women's. It was two weeks, actually. And it was an absolutely fantastic feeling. Um, you know, I've now been invited back to the States to do a lot of different things. So looking at back at what I have told you about, I haven't delved deep because I can't give you anything specific, but those are top line things that you need to think about and what you need to, um, what you need to do to not only prepare yourself for a seven, uh, a seven figure, seven steps to a seven figure exit, but it all starts with making sure that you have the right product or the right service. And from there on, you need to make sure that you're doing the right things. All, and you can't be sure, you, can't, you can never be sure, but you can try. But one of the things you also have to think about is from where you start to where you end, be prepared for that, be prepared for the exit, because it's not always the easiest thing to do. Thank you so much for watching, we hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and watch the rest of our talks below.